everyone. How are you? I hope that you had a fantastic Monday. I am here with another wisdom jewel for you. And let's dive right into this because I started this journey. Hi, hi everyone on Periscope. Hey, Alexia. Hey, King Cyrus. Glory, so good to see you. I hope you are having a, again, a great day. So I am here to talk to you about something, of course, very important always. Lord has something important on his mind. This time, we're talking about the law of faith. You said, hey, he sent you a message. Okay, I'll check it, all right? I did take a nap, <laughs> and so um, I'm fresh off of a nap from about an hour or so ago, so uh, I'll definitely be checking that message, King Cyrus. Hey, Latricia said, hey, family. Hey, Latricia, good to see you, woman of God, prophetess. Hey, everyone. So I, let's, let's start in worship. As always, we have our pattern. And then we're going to get into a very deep word on the law of faith and how it's necessary in order to achieve success. So, Father, we just want to say thank you for bringing us together as a ministry, as a family, as a spiritual family. We've gotten this time where we know we're going to gather up underneath your Holy Spirit, your presence. And we are just so eager to learn from you and to know your word from us on a daily. We want you to know that you have our whole heart, Father, our whole heart. We will never betray you. We will never look to the side. We will always obey you. We need you and we humbly serve you as faithful people on the earth, Father. And while we enjoy our earthly journey, and we enjoy what you've called us to do specifically for each other. Father, what we enjoy most is the thought of being with you on the throne in heaven and taking our rightful place after we finish this fantastic mission, Father. And so we enjoy our earthly and then we look forward to our heavenly, Father. And we thank you for giving us powerful minds to bring the heavens on the earth and giving us dominion in the earth so that whatever we loose on earth, Father, it is established in heaven. Glory to God. And so I am going to go ahead and quickly share this on Facebook, and then we're going to dive right in. What's been happening with you all? Oh, we just reached our first 100 likes on Facebook. Yay! Woo-hoo! Party over here. And so I do encourage you to invite your friends uh, to get to know our ministry and what we're doing here, we're prophesying and we're, we're learning the laws of success and we are being delivered to a higher, a higher level. We are elevating, solving problems and so much more. And so I'm almost done, give me about one second. Okay. And so, comforting knowing that God gives us a means to predict our outcomes. Now there are so many things in life that are unpredictable because so many people have the law in them of cause and effect. They can cause so many things to happen. But I remember starting this journey, October 17th, 2017, and I thought in my heart, I said, and I was wearing this dress actually, and I said, what do I really want to do for people? I wanted to learn all of God's laws, as many laws as the Lord allowed me to, to teach you and set you up for success. I am highly success oriented and I love the word and I love how you said good glory. Is that Vidal? Oh, that's Raphael. Hey, Raphael. I know Vidal usually has that little username and then I saw another little username. Hey, Raphael. Good to see you. Welcome. And so I knew. This is all about learning the laws of success and everything else that the Lord wants us to learn and to grow in and do. So we've done so many things in our ministry, but that's been the whole undertone. And the Lord is bringing us back to that message at a deeper level. The Lord wants you to know that you can predict your success based on his laws. And the law of faith is the highest law. Think about what happened when Jesus went and met Peter. Simon, known as Peter, and his brother Andrew. He was successful because he operated in faith. He said, I will make you fishers of men. He was faithful in his ability to make a promise. 
and then immediately afterwards demonstrate what he said he would do. After he operated in faith, after he made the promise, after he took on people to come on the journey with him, he started fulfilling that promise in faith. Had Jesus lost his faith and lost the power of operating in a higher, at a higher level, he would have lost it all. He would have lost his supernatural ability. And that's one of the mystic things about the Bible that I love. It immediately shifts me to what I'm doing in the moment, in the natural, up to this higher level of anything is possible, the supernatural, miracles, manifestation power in our hands. And another thing that I like about reading the Bible is that what Jesus does, he said we will do and we can do at a greater level. And so it's all possible for us, but we must know these laws. And so the Lord wants you to recognize that number one, your success is predictable. And number two, you should operate in faith first and then apply all of these, uh, these subsequent laws as we function like Jesus did in the earth. And so are you the type of person who is more concerned about rules? Now, I'm a rule. I love following rules. I love following rules. But rules do not trump laws. So what, what are we saying? As you follow rules, those things that are laws within companies, establishments, relationships, there are rules all over the place. And there are rules that are different depending upon who, who's in charge. But God's in charge of the universe. So when we think about laws, we think about God's rules. And God's rules guarantee you success in a universal manner. So when we talk about faith, we're not talking about just hoping. We're talking about having a high level mentality, believing at a high level, so that what you're thinking about in the spirit manifests in the natural. And then what happens, you start doing supernatural things in the natural like Jesus did. Come with me. And then who else did he go, he, who else did he go recruit? He went to go recruit James. And I believe it was one other. It was a brother of one other. I can't remember his name right now. I, I believe it might have been. No, it was John and James. And so he, he was like, come on, Peter. Come on, Andrew. Come on, John. Come on, James. You all are fishing right now. But look at what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn you from fishing for fish. And I'm going to increase you. I'm going to elevate you. And I'm going to make you a fisher of men. Look at the dominion and the faith on that. And so as the Lord is exercising this, this awareness in us on today, the Lord is saying, are you willing to operate in a greater degree of faith? At a greater degree of faith. Are you willing? And you know that you're willing when you start thinking higher, when you start setting goals, when you start thinking uh, beyond just rules. Yes, rules are laws at a, at a lower level, but you start thinking about higher rules, higher laws, God's laws. So what does God say I must do? What did Jesus do in order to manifest in the earth? He was a faithful man. He was a person who networked. He was a demonstrator. He was consistent. He did all of these things. And when you think about what the Lord was doing, the Lord allowed him to be baptized and then to be tempted and then to leave. So woman of God, man of God, the maze that you've been through was all setting you up. It was setting you up for this leadership, this success that is now in your hands. You've been tempted. You stayed by the Lord. You worship the Lord. You didn't put your hands into the enemy. You didn't, you didn't sell out God. You've been in this anointed atmosphere. Hopefully you've been baptized. You are ready for this next level. So are you operating in faith? And do you believe in, in, in that realm of predictability? Because when you believe that you can predict your faith, it motivates you. It makes you say, hey, hey, Veronica. Hi, Veronica. Good to see you. Oh, and, and we're writing the book. We're, we're in Matthew. We're Matthew chapter four, okay? So that you can see where my mind is at in the Bible. Hey, Veronica. Hey, hey, hey. How are you? You said love the look. Oh, thank you. I thought you were saying love the book. Hold on, let me get the book. <laughs> I thought you were saying love the book. I'm actually matching the book right now. Wisdom Jewels Volume 1. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> 
I'm like, yes, glory. And so I, I, I just like following that. So I grabbed it because that's what came to my mind. Look at this. When I opened up the book, the Lord led me to leadership. Remember, we were just talking about leadership. I knew the Lord was doing something with that. It, on page 127 in my book, Wisdom Jewels, look at what it says, everyone. Decree this. God, I am sensitive to your voice on the inside of me. Tell me the truth at any time. This is it. I submit to the truth and believe that it will lead me to greater freedom. Leadership. So you, so the Lord is asking you to be like Peter, like Andrew, like John, like James. He wants to lead you. He said, come with me. Listen to my prophet. Read my word. You prophesy. Let's do this together. Have faith that he can lead you to this next level. When you do this, you are guaranteed to be delivered. You are guaranteed to be free. So let's talk about the specifics and what, what this means for you. So I know for me, hey, who is this? Hey, Flor, Flor Orlando. <laughs> I know for me, it was hard for me to have faith without a word, okay? So I needed, I have faith in myself at a level, but to do something radically obedient, I needed to be sure that the, that the Lord was feeding a word into me. And so number one, the Lord has spoken his word to you. He is, he is saying, he is sure that he's going to lead you, number one. The next thing that I want to say with this is to be careful that you do not get wrapped up in words that just make you feel good for the moment. There are so many, this is my pet peeve. So when, we, when we're thinking about faith and success and predictability, think about what makes you frustrated. This is the problem that you're called to solve. This is this is where God is asking you to develop an expertise so you can deliver people out of this realm. This is one level of your purpose. I get frustrated when the Bible is read, the word is given, but it just makes you feel good, but it doesn't help you get, get anywhere. It, it, just, it just says, okay, do, do this or, or have this, but then it's like, well, what, what exactly do I do? That is word and inspiration without manifestation. And so number one, I will say, what is the word of God on your life? You need to know it and you need to act on it. Take the action because that is exactly what Jesus did. He knew what he was called to do. He had an assignment for himself. What, what was his assignment for the four disciples? To be a fisher of men. That was Jesus's assignment. He came down here to be a fisher of men. And so when you look at the word, thank you for those hearts. When you look at the word that has been seated in you, the Lord is saying, be led by it, believe it, do it. Don't be stuck in a place of indecision because the Lord cannot deliver you into higher, a higher degree of success. And you definitely can't be a leader if you have not decided to follow the word of the Lord that has been planted on your heart. So the foundation, again, of this discussion is that your success is predictable based on God's laws. It may not be predictable on the laws of, of specific companies, specific, all that, follow it because that's integrity, but we need to be high, thinking higher. And then number two, do not get caught in the trap of just feeling good about the word delivered to you. Again, that's my pet peeve. Think about how to convert that. We need the conversion process at work. So when I personally read the word, I'm thinking, what is Jesus doing to make him a success in the world? What is Jesus doing to deliver people? How, how is Jesus uh, uh, speaking to the father and showing honor to the father? And, and even though they share the same spirit, how is he in the flesh having a relationship with his father? What, what's all at work and how do, I, how do I convert that for my own purpose and use? So when people are telling you fast, uh, what, what are some other concepts that are, that are communicated? Um, uh, know that God is, is, is a graceful God, the law of grace. Yes, that makes us feel good and especially people who sin because they think, oh, well, God is going to give me another chance. That is a, to me, that's, that's high in a sense. Grace is high. 
But if you don't take the law of grace and then convert it into how can I use God's forgiveness to make me a better service leader to the world and then focus on that. Don't just focus on the grace. The law of grace doesn't really serve your success purposes. And so we have to shake ourselves up and move, remove ourselves from, from being comforted by the word to being edified and being made more astute in the word and then applying it to these systems like the financial realm, the financial world. I remember reading something today and it was talking about how people who go to school for, for traditional things work for people who go to school for finance and think in finance. How, how to make the kingdom of God's money move accurately, properly, properly, uh, better, profitably, is what the Lord wanted to say out of my mouth and made it come through. <laughs> the Lord will make certain things come through my mouth, even when I'm not trying to. So, okay. I mean, I, I got a traditional education and then I went to school for business afterwards where I learned the realm of finance and I, I got a, some really great understanding. So, when you become educated about God's word and his laws, that puts you at a higher level immediately. And then when you apply that to the systems of the world, it just it just makes you take off. But you must believe in yourself and be led by God. The Lord has pointed me to page 42. And then the Lord is now saying here, are you going to be adaptable? Because the next level, once I tapped into faith and once I tapped into radical obedience, which for me began. Uh, wow, it began in 2010. But as a single woman, it started over in 2012. And it was, I had a lot of radical obedience before then too as a younger woman, but I'm talking about radical obedience in my adult, adult years. <laughs> um, so are you flexible enough to be fluid? Welcome, Joseph. Be fluid. I went through so much learning without being flexible. So no matter how much faith you have, how much awareness of the law of God's laws you have and how much education you have, if you're not flexible, then it's going to be challenging for you to be elevated in God's word. So I want to ask you right now, because these ministry and coaching broadcasts are for our edification and us discerning the word of the Lord, but they're very interactive and reflective. So I just talked about three levels there. We're discerning God's word and learning God's word as I'm teaching and coaching and as the Lord feeds us prophetically, then we're interacting, but then we're reflecting. So I just want to ask you right now to think about this. Are you being inflexible in, in an area? Because the Lord is pointing us to that adaptability. If the Lord gives you a word to say, believe me, let me lead you here. Will you give up the fishing pole like the four disciples and go to their greater life? Or will you say, no, I got, I'm really focused on this objective here. Thank you for those hearts. I'm really focused on this objective. I've studied this for the last 10 years. My parents did this. They, this is their, this is my legacy. This is what I, I saw someone doing. This is what I said I was going to do when I was seven years old. Or, you know, are you flexible? Because the Lord, the more flexible you are, the more useful you are for the kingdom of God. And so I, I, it took me years to get that concept down understanding that I needed to function more fluidly with the Lord. Okay. And then let's continue this. I like this. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then interestingly, the Lord is asking you, are you mature? So after he began communicating to us about faith, loss, flexibility, are you mature? What does it mean to be Mature. When I think of being mature, I think of having grit. Grit. A mature person does not submit easily to foolishness. A mature person is one who forgives easily. They, they focus on the higher objective. They, they are not easily led into lower level functionality and thinking. They keep the big picture in mind. And they stay firm on that. And then therefore their stability on the big picture permits them to be a leader. And so is the Lord trying to mature you is what he's saying. 
Do, do you know this in your heart? And are you willing? Or do you think that you're already fully mature? I come to tell you that we're all growing in our ability to be mature. Glory. Maturity at a level is functioning the way that God desires you to function. Maturity is submission. Maturity is saying, okay, I did it this way last year or last week, but I'm going to be mature enough to be uh, introspective is the word that I like to use. Introspective. And say, I, I'm, I'm going to be my own critic. I, I need to operate higher. I need to take this feedback. I need to get advice. I need to get a coach. I need to redesign this. I need to invest in a different area. Maturity. Maturity. These are all laws that follow faith that manifest your success. Oh my goodness. I, I love this so much. Glory. Hey, you all. And so will you follow the Lord? Will you be mature? Will you detach? The law of detachment is also one of the laws that follows faith. Being detached is necessary for you to achieve success. Are you too stuck? Are you too stuck? Or are you willing to say, you know what? I don't really need this. What I need is God and what I need is my assignment. What I need is my harvest. What I need is my future. And this is what I'm going to direct my energy towards. Thank you for that. I see him. Detachment. Detachment. What are, let me ask you this. What are you willing to detach from in order to follow God and his leading, his calling for your life? What are you willing to detach from? And as we have these ministry and coaching conversations, I hope that you have a notebook dedicated to us, to our, to what we're doing here. Because these are notes from the Holy Spirit. These are notes that will deliver you out of one level and get you into the next. I love it. You are, the Lord is saying, and let me feed your subconscious mind. You are a miracle worker. You, you have so much power in your hands that if you just follow God and his leading and his calling in your life, he is going to lead you to higher and higher levels. Will he correct you? Will he permit you to face challenges? Yes. But so long as you stay in faith, you're going to keep on pressing forward. And you need to know that this is not just for you. This is for everyone attached to you. This is the reason why the month of April was such a critical and also challenging month for me. The Lord permitted me to go through some very challenging, um, and I shouldn't say very challenging, but like I, I faced some blockages and I needed to elevate because it's not just about me. It's about you and it's about everyone connected to you who you will impact. So are you willing to be led? Are you willing to be detached? Are you willing to go through this process and strengthen your mental muscles? Glory, glory, glory. You are partnering with God and people. And this is amazing. He's asking you, can you be both obedient and flexible? And he's pointing us back to Matthew. And we're in Matthew right now. Matthew chapter 10, verse 39 through 40. It says, whoever finds his life will lose it. We'll lose it. So that comfortable space that you're in right now, where you know that you may not have to pay so much for rent, you know that someone else may be working and, and they may be covering you, they may be, have been a covering for you, but you know if you step out, you're going to have to pay more, you're going to have to do more. Will you lose that life? And when the Lord says lose your life, he means the life that you're currently experiencing. Are you willing to lose it? You have to be. You have to be. And the Lord was reminding me when he said, let the dead bury the dead. This is part of you saying, what's behind me is behind me. 
Yes, I love my family. Yes, all of this is great. And yes, I'm going to go back at the right time. But the time when God is increasing you is not the time to be looking backwards or keeping your life. Keeping your thought life is what the Lord is saying. Lose your life. That means everything concerning your natural patterns, your natural experiences. The Lord is delivering you a better life. Period. A better life. As you learn and apply his laws, beginning with the highest and then all of the ones that lead to greater success and fulfillment. Yes, Jesus. Where are we right now? We're in Matthew chapter 10, verses 39 and 40. Hey, Periscope. Hey, Facebook. You said it's so hard to move out of comfort zones. Yes, it is, Spicy Bay. It is so hard. And comfort zones are so... When, when the Lord is growing you, they can be so dangerous. You said, Lord, help me. Yes, they are dangerous. And the Lord had me say that just specifically like that for a reason. A comfort zone is like a, a film over you in many ways. It's like, I'm, I'm comfortable, I'm settled. But then the Lord speaks and he says, do this. He inspires you to do this. But this would upset the system. This would upset my, my current realm. This would upset who I'm around. But you know the Lord said it. That's why he said, are you willing to be led by me? Remember, the whole, the vibe, the feel, the teaching is all up under when the Lord told the four disciples to follow him because he had an assignment with for them that was akin to his. Yes, inner man. Glory to God. Hey, me. Oh, wait, hold on. Let me get the name right. Mimi. Hey, Mimi. Yes, your inner man. Then it's the natural that is that is so motivated by comfort. It's the natural realm. The spirit is always inclining you. You all, when I am, I can rest, I can relax, but there's something that I notice about myself where I'm like, okay, next, 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 next. That's spirit led. What, what do I do next? Okay, I'm constantly updating the website. You all may go to the website one moment and then you go back to the website and there's something new there. There, you know, and it's just like, that being ignited by that is so critical. Comfort is necessary though. You know man's law, men's law's hierarchy of needs. So you need to know that you are safe. You need to know that you're going to be housed. But there's going to be some a time where the Lord is going to ask you to move that hierarchy of needs aside. And he's going to say, have faith in me. All Jesus told the four disciples was follow me. He didn't say, I was going to house you. He didn't say any of that. He said, follow me. And then he started demonstrating his power in dominion. So as you follow the Lord, I want to remind you that the Lord has dominion. You have dominion in the earth, but the Lord has such great dominion that if you trust him in those uncomfortable times and know that your father is such a powerful ruler, that he will, and this is me comforting you, he will provide so long as you continue to keep your mind and your actions right. He will provide. Provide. He will increase you from not catching any fish to catching more than enough. To bringing people along with you. To giving you a supernatural ability to discern and understand and motivate and persuade and influence. To now you are a leader. What is a leader? A leader is a person that has demonstrated such dominion, skill, and faith that people now listen to them. And they follow them. And they invest their mental energy in them. And they learn from them and they increase from them. So these are all the levels that the Lord is taking you to. And I just, I know that I'm on an assignment and you are on an assignment to increase with God. Yes, Mimi said, thank you, Holy Spirit. You said, my God, it is the truth, woman of God. Do not be comforted underneath wrong rules. Don't get your mind because... 
me being a type A personality, so to speak, you know, I, I have a God personality, a God shit personality, but in certain circles, that's called a type A. So we go to school, we get the education, we, we go to the job. This was me at a level, but then all of a sudden you're just focused on these rules, what the world tells you to do when the Lord is saying, wait, there's a higher, I have a higher calling. That's the law of the land. And that gets you a degree of success, but there's so, there's so much supernatural food for you to eat on to get you to a greater level. And faith, woman and man of God, the Lord is saying, be led by this and his word because he has a powerful assignment on your life. And when we come on the broadcast, we talk about concepts a lot and truths a lot. But when we do our one-to-one -one coaching, this is where we get into a deeper level of, of uh, application for you specifically. And so if you're interested in that, make sure you're going to the so page and the register page at aliyahconnect.com. aliyahconnect.com forward slash register forward slash so. Oh, glory to God. Look at this. And the Lord is saying, as, as you're doing this, he says, when God... Well, I wrote this in the book. When God recompenses you, because we're talking about recompense, because just like when you go into a job and you get benefits, the Lord has recompense. When the Lord recompenses you, this is him. Well, this is what we like to say, giving you double for your trouble. You say elevation. Yes. <laughs> double for your trouble. And thank you, Mimi. You said elevation. Yes, that's what I'm focused on. Elevation. So... The Lord will plant you in a place to get you benefits and to get you an assignment and a network. But remember that you're working for God and he's, he's recompensing you. So everything that, that you've gone through, many people think of this from the, the trouble, from the adversary realm. But the Lord just gave me a revelation in my heart. That's the trouble that he permitted you and called you to go through in order to follow him. He will recompense you for that too. He... <laughs> Thank you, Father. That is beautiful. He will give you double for all of your trouble, no matter what realm it came from. You said, amen, amen. I love that. Thank you, Father. Benefits versus recompense. Yes. Jesus, be recompensed. Be recompensed. And what... The enemy will get you to do is to step out of faith and make you believe that there will be no recompense for you. That there will be no reward. There will be no covering, no protection. Hey, Elise, welcome to our ministry and coaching broadcast. Good to see you. Oh, love that you're here. So, be, so rest assured. Begin your visualization. Begin your action items. Begin writing down your value. Begin making your promises. What are you promising people? Because before people will lead you, you have to be promising something. You have to deliver them that. So what on your, and this is our application piece. We're not doing this. Um, we'll do this one-to-one -one when we have our one-to-one -one coaching. But all together as a group in our public ministry, let's apply this for you. What are you going to promise people that you will definitely do for them? Write it down. What's your promise? Do you want to know my promise to you? My promise to you is to help you. Well, first of all, teach you God's word. Okay? My purpose is to teach you God's word, number one. Then help you elevate and solve problems using your inner power. Four levels to my promise to you. So again, my promise is to teach you God's word and to help you elevate and solve problems using your inner power. And so when we do these broadcasts and when you enroll in the courses and when we do our one-to-one -one and you're in our private Zoom classes, your inner power is coming from the knowledge that you're giving, give, uh, you are being given and you're learning from the world as well. And then the inner internal intelligence that's already on the inside of you, your inner power, your subconscious mind. So glory to God. That is my promise to you. Are you willing to make a promise statement to your 
clients to your employer, to everyone that you're providing customer service to. I encourage you to make it crystal clear on tonight. And everything that you do in the world, your subconscious mind and your, your brain will direct you on ways to increase and, and literally focus on that. The problem that many people face is that they haven't decided. That decision is a law too, a law of success. They haven't decided what their promise is. Where Jesus said, I will make you fishers of men, that was his promise. They haven't decided what theirs is. So what do they do? They function underneath someone else's promise for, for their whole life. And they say, well, your promise is going to become my promise. There's nothing wrong with um, appreciating a company's mission or uh, a person's mission and saying, you know what? I believe in that. I'm going to make that my promise too, but I'm going to put my own special twist on it. I'm going to add my own spirit to it. Anytime you take on someone else's promise and you feed it and you help them, which is perfect, that person needs you and God needs you to put your own spirit in it. You need that too because you're here to be a creator. So if you're only replicating what someone else is already doing or how they're telling you to do it, what do you do? You lose your creative power. You, you, you lose your inspiration, your motivation, and your passion. So do that. Write down your promise. And then think, who are you going to recruit? Who are you going to take with you? If anyone's willing, I'm interested at this point. Uh, I'm interested at in all points, but I'm interested in this particular question. I'd like to know if you'd be willing to share it openly. What is your promise? Can someone share that? And if it's not 100% articulated, this is a part of the detail system that I created. This is our personal ministry system, the details. That's a part of the um, T in details, tailor written in communi uh, visual communications. What is your promise? I told you mine. I told you Jesus's to the four disciples, the initial four disciples. What is yours? And I'll wait. I wanna hear somebody's promise. When, when I was teaching at the high school, we called this wait time. <laughs> Sometimes I, I mentioned that. Well, I didn't call it, I didn't do that at the college level. It was, it was cool, that was something that was taught to me at, at the uh, high school level. So yeah, mm -hmm. what's your promise? Application, live, come on. You guys are like, I don't know. <laughs> Nobody wants to share their promise? Okay. Aw, you all. So make sure, if you're not ready with that promise, make sure that you do it. And don't be afraid. Jesus tells us that, that he is seated in the heavens at the right hand of the father for you and 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 with us with that being said some of you know your promise but you didn't say it but for those of you who didn't okay someone someone did share their promise irene shared her promise oh you said put on the spot yeah okay so you were sharing your promise you said put on the spot yeah as a as a coach that's part of my job to identify those gaps in the film because if you aren't, if you don't know your promise, it's okay. I was there too, but it won't be okay moving forward because God has given us the awareness that we need a promise. He had a promise. We need a promise. So get it ready. Irene said, I have to think more into that. Yeah. See mental exercises. We we're trying, we 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 have a, a very unique flow in our ministry from the word to real life business application. And that's a part that's, that's my personality. And so homework, and, I, and, and when you say homework, whenever I say homework, which I might come up with another word, action item. I love action item because that's more mature. That's, I don't like when someone says, here's your homework. I'm like, I'm 33 years old. <laughs> so that can't, I can't, like, that can't come out of my mouth to you all. I, that was high school, fine. But our action item is, Your action item, if you haven't done this, is to come up with your promise statement. Okay? So, 
and, and make it clear. And if you want to shoot it to me, I can't guarantee you. Like, if in preparation of your one to one, shoot it to me. Let's get that tailored and let's start organizing everything concerning your business life around your promise. And your promise must come after you discovering your divine purpose. Remember, Irene, yesterday, she was saying that she felt her purpose was to teach children. And so as we transition her purpose into her business functionality, that's part of that, being clear about her promise. And you need to know that you can, you can keep your promise. Why? Because you are you. You have power. You have internal intelligence. But you have a protection in the earth. You know, when I say in the earth, the Lord, Jesus, is, is seated. He reminded me in the book. He pointed me to this. Oh, look at this. Someone wrote the thick old promise. Yes, this is Alexia. I was, I was saying Jesus is seated at the right hand of the power above all principalities to protect you. So as you go into the land and as you do your work and as even some of you all will be traveling doing your work, you all will be traveling in your own land, and, and I'm about to read that, Spicy Bay. I love that you put that down. And you see how we're pushing forward, and we're growing, and we're being closer together, and we're sharing these things, and we're doing this work together. My goodness. Let me just make sure I tell you this, what the Lord is saying. Move around boldly and confidently, because you have a father who is seated at the right hand of the alt, the most high father, Jesus Christ seated at the right hand of the father to protect you in every principality that you go through as you do your work. You are guided and protected. Ah, yes. Okay. Okay. So Alexia wrote to us. She said, my promise is to love and teach people to learn how to channel knowledge of their physical greatness. Oh, I love that. And enhance it in the out the inside to radiate it on the outside oh i love that quiche hey quiche welcome from delaware we have a wonderful woman of god here from delaware oh alexia i love that so okay so alexia said that she wants to love people number one and she wants to teach people hey everyone teach people to learn how to channel knowledge of their physical greatness. So you want to, you want to teach people about this. So you want to be motivational. You want to be inspirational. Okay. I would just say we have we're going to make that more specific. So what aspect of their greatness is it? Greatness in authority. Greatness in uh, leadership. Greatness. In, so so we'll figure out a deeper level of your divine calling to figure out which side of greatness are you referring to. You said enhance it in the inside to radiate on the outside. Okay, so inner greatness, ex, uh, exu, um, making that evident in the world, okay? So I went through this process myself because I, I just like Alexia, um, prophetess here, she is telling us that she wants to help people radiate their inner greatness so me too love that we need to be more specific so that's when i decided to focus on career business because that's that's a part of my my divine passion my divine assignment so woman of god as you say that maybe it is for people who are in your your line of work because you know you're a hair specialist you all know alexia was a part of a prophecy concerning me. We haven't talked about it live. Like she and I, we haven't talked about it live yet, but I, I talked about it. Um, but I've known Alexia since, I've known Alexia for over 10 years. Yeah, I met Alexia in 2011, or 2010. And she, fantastic, she's in the hair business. And uh, I invited her to come and work on a show with me to do my model's hair because we were doing a fashion segment, a live fashion segment in Chicago, Illinois. Because you all know I was a fashion reporter there. And so, because I, I went to school for media and then all that. So I was, I was always on the lookout for people who were great in Chicago, who could do hair, who could do makeup, who were models um, as I was booking, producing, and all of that with my shows. Thank you for the super heart. So Alexia, 
I, I just have to share this with you. Alexia came on one of the productions, did the client's hair, all the model's hair, whipped it up. My God, I booked her for so many shows. But I remember there was a show where I was so flustered and I was in the middle of all the production. I was supposed to have her come and be on stage with us. It was like her and a group of other people. And this was a Valentine's Day segment. And I was like, oh my gosh, I've totally forgot. This is how swamped I was. But here's the thing. The Lord was telling me that it all happened for a reason. But I looked at Alexia's face and she was just like, she, she was walking out of the, out of the uh, production door. And her face was just like, wow like for her to be able to take all of the whole lights and put it we were just talking about this together <laughs> all of the lights all of the experience all of that in and just there was a look on her face that after over 10 years i will never forget the look that was on alexia's face one of hope and inspiration and so as alexia's telling us about what she wants to do for others it reminds me of how she was inspired and how it was her skill and expertise that led her to that point of, of inspiration. So Lexia, it may be you helping women who already have a skill that's connected to yours elevate, yes, and put themselves in locations where they can be greater, where they can learn more, where they can believe in themselves more, like believing in yourself as a professional hairstylist, believing in yourself as a, as a this or something very specific because there's a there's a law related to being specific so when you think of lawyers law practices that uh, just specialize in general law or even doctors general uh general medical practice these are good but when you get specialized knowledge and when you become a, a specialized individual that is when you start commanding money that is when you start commanding loyalty um people seeking you out from all areas of the world you know there are people that will fly from one country to another just because a doctor specializes in something or 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 even a lawyer or whoever so when we go deep in these one-to-one -one calls i'm going to be going so far into your deepest desires and what the lord's will is for you so that we can get you very crystal clear focus on that on your purpose okay so we've got about 12 comments uh waiting who gave us the super heart let me see if i can see this hey 303 thank you man of god for your super heart i love seeing that oh libra life said your hair thank you yes i dyed it back black and before i dyed it back black i did let me show you the back of your hair <laughs> so you all know it was blonde and then the Lord called me out in a live double bro uh, prophecy about he didn't like my wig. And it was very clear what, how he said it, what he said. And I was like, all right, Father. And then he showed me a vision of this hairstyle. And it was interesting. I was on Instagram. And the Lord said, look at the woman, the sixth woman to the left. The sixth, because we were having a conversation about my hair. Because I was <laughs> in, my, in my spirit, God and I were talking about my hair. And I'm like, well, God, what, okay, what, how do you want me to wear it? And he was like, I was called, he was like, go, sometimes the Lord will say, go to Instagram, go to, he'll direct me to answers, literally. So I, he said the sixth woman to the left. So I counted one, two, three, four, five, six. The Lord had just showed me my own sister who had cut her hair like this. And she looked so cute. And I was thinking, I was like, okay, is it this? And the Lord confirmed it. The sixth woman on the left had this hairstyle. It was a different color, but it was short. And the Lord was basically saying, yes, confirm. Yes, your sister's hair is super cute. The sixth woman to the left on this Instagram picture, go ahead and turn your hair back to this. <laughs> so uh, all of that is just to say, it's just to share a little story with you, a big story. All the prophetic things I, that I experience are big to me. But that's a little detail of the things that happen in my mind and my life. So when you see me make radical changes, it's all rooted in an in instruction that the Lord has given me. So if you're in my life and you're like, man, I didn't understand that or, or man, you know, something you need to know that this I'm a I'm a God fearing and God obeying and God loving woman. And I, I will do what the Lord says do uh, in a moment. And um, that's just what it is. This is what, and, and the Lord is calling you to be like that as well. So that's a nice little funny story. Spicy so Bay confidence. You said, amen. Hey, welcome back. Hemsfield. 
so happy that you caught one of the uh, live broadcasts. Now I'm coming on at a regular time. You all who have been watching the replays will know when to be able to see me live. And I'm so glad to be able to see you live. You said got the glow like Bruce Leroy. Hey, <laughs> spicy man, you funny. <laughs> I love that. And so look at that wonderful exercise that would not have been born unless Alexia shared her her promise. We wouldn't have had that, that experience together. So thank you, Alexia. You said, always send you blessings. You are really priceless. We need more women leaders like you. Oh my goodness. I absolutely love that you said that. Thank you so much. I am humbled and I'm honored to be a leader and to serve you. You said amen and amen. Yes. So anyone else open to sharing their promise? You said, thanks for guidance. Glory. Thank you so much, Hemsfield. You said, she definitely is a leader. Thank you, Alexia. And so are you all. You all are so special. So special and loved by God. So special. Irene said she's going to, okay, so she, before she said she was going to think into it. So, yep, that's an action item. I hope that tonight you go ahead and um, get your action, your promise, deliver, and so that everything that happens in your world will that is connected to that promise is drawn to you and then you increase and increase and increase in expertise but yes i'm seeing all the love and i'm loving on you all right back and these journeys that we have on these this daily basis the sunday through thursday basis is just it's so special and it feeds us so much life and i love preparation the preparation stage of coming before you as well as sharing what is on the heart of the Holy Spirit for you in the process. You said, I just cut my hair after six years and I'm working out. Hey, hey, how did you cut your hair? What did it look like? So we both just experienced the haircut. <laughs> now, when I cut my hair, it was, there was still some blonde. So even though I had my pieces on, it was already cut like this. With the blonde, actually, I came on once with it, with it cut. Um, and then I went, went ahead and dyed it blonde. So, oh Jesus. Okay, let's, um, before we wrap up, because we like to keep these around an hour so that we can, you know, consistently know how long we're going to be on so you can delegate your time accordingly and just have a structure and a framework around this. Father God, Holy Spirit, what is your prophetic word for your people through your word, Father? 373, page 373. because I have a word here. I want to make sure that the Lord gets this through. You know, something stood out to me. Um, yesterday, we had a prophecy. We were in the middle of a prophecy and I was so upset because I had a vision that I, I didn't say it. <laughs> but it was, it was accurate. It, it was a young man. We were prophesying so many other things that the Lord said was accurate. But he showed me a vision of media, television, and I should have said it. Um, and then... Because we were talking about what his father did. Yeah, King Cyrus, I was beating myself up about that last night. Because you could have had that experience had I just spoken the word. And the Lord pointed me to the word media in the Bible. <laughs> and so, King Cyrus, I believe that the Lord is prompting you. He's saying, yes, do it. Do it. I know that that's the case. Some of you all may want to consider going into media as well or, or figuring out your media connections, how you will use media to serve the Lord. This word right here for you, this is for you. The Lord is serious, King Cyrus. Media, media. When we have our one-to-one, -one, okay, what, when did you message me? I'll, I'm going to find out in just a minute. But tell me. Because I'm going to respond right after the broadcast, and we're going to get your one-to-one -one schedule. Because the Lord is really pulling on you. Where did I see that? I just saw that. It was a big old word, media. Oh, 373. 
So we'll we'll talk about this. Yes, yeah, in the toe bit. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So the Lord is wanting me to um to talk to you about this one to one. Okay. So we'll get your call on the books. I knew that. I think the Lord might have wanted me to tell you how much I was beating up on myself for not saying it. Because I'm like, man, I know I see, I'm seeing media. <laughs> oh, look at that. And him, Phil said, looked up a social media job for Christianity today. Look at that. Yes. I'm like, wow, out of all the words, the Lord magnetized and drew me, put a real power on the word media in the book of Tobit. Look up and look at that. You said a lot of offline friends are telling me to go into social media. See, yes, yeah, CEO full time. That's a big thing. And King Cyrus said, I figured out what the offer 25% of the half cup you were talking to. See, good. Okay, so you did. Thank you for telling me that because I was like, man, I could I missed one piece of your prophecy that you could have. I saw it, but you could have experienced through my mouth. Just one piece, but every everything else looks like you discern. Great. So you figure that out. I can't wait to figure out what the Lord was saying. Uh, in greater detail for you about that 25% of that half, that uh, that 25% of the mason jar, where 75% was full of inspiration, but then that missing 25%. He said, my job is evidence management of media management. Ooh, yes. Wow, it looks like we probably have a, we need to have a, a conversation too. Um, Cause that's my lane as well. Media management and all that from my career experience and my work in media. So this is great. Keep it coming, you all. Keep sharing. We're going to keep learning the word. We're going to keep elevating. Keep tapping into your inner power, feeding your, your inner power. And then we're going to be talking about the necessary action items for us all to grow. And tonight, please make sure you go ahead and um, complete your promise statement. You said you are always so accurate. It's scary to be honest. You have a lot of influence and power. Yeah, H Hemsville. Hemsville, if I'm not mistaken, did I, did I prophesy to you last summer about uh, a career... Hemsfield, was that you? I think we... You said you did 100%. Yes. And uh, wow, I remember that, Hemsfield. And look at that. The Lord is the Lord is prop prophesying to you again here. <laughs> he said you are 100% accurate. I love that. How did you discover your prophetic insight? Oh, hi. Nanonki. Nanonki donkey. Nanonki donkey. <laughs> you hear his name? Ah, some of y'all's uh, Periscope names are actually really funny. Uh, how did I discover it? You said she is flowing the will of God. She is very favored. Hi. <laughs> oh, thank you, Phil. Yes, I appreciate that. It's true. I am, um, well, number one, I come from a family, a highly prophetic uh, family. So grandmother had very vivid dreams. So if she woke up in the morning and she said, I dreamt this, we knew what was coming. Um, is, is very deep. Then I would say for me personally, I remember a time uh, when I was talking to a friend and all of a sudden I said, weren't you premature? And he said, how did you know that? There was no way that I could have known that other than having the Lord tell me that in my spirit. I think to just give him a revelation that God was with him through me in a sense as a friend. And um, so it was at the, those little moments talking to friends and just having knowledge about their families, even people in college that I didn't know. I just knew them through college. I'm like, isn't your mother like this? I had never even met their mother. And I just remember us being all at Subway in downtown Chicago. And she's looking at me like, uh, how did you know that? Like, this is really strange. So I think it was just little by little just realizing I had an awareness, like a super supernatural awareness uh that was not mine it was god imparting it to me and lo and behold i started ministering and i was like okay i'm going to teach the word i did not come on the broadcast i did not start teaching the word to prophesy i didn't i came on to be obedient to god and to help people become more successful and to learn the word it was only after about two broadcasts that the lord said now go ahead and prophesy and I'm just like, okay, I was so nervous. I was like, okay, I'm just going to say what I see, say what I see. And that was when the woman, one woman was watching the broadcast that I knew, but I didn't know it was her. And a week later, she said that was exactly what was true for me. So that gave me prophetic confidence. Then I did another one. And I was like, oh, okay, 
this is real. And then I did the third one. I was like, okay, this is real. And then I sold a ministry activation seed and boom, I had someone from kindergarten come on and say, you just described every single thing that I'm going through. And this is so challenging for me. And then I prophesied to her mother who was going through very deep things. So it was just a whole cycle, a domino, <coughs> excuse me, effect. Glory. Let me go get some water. Oh, you all are in my kitchen. Welcome to my kitchen. Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to the kitchen. <laughs> well, I am going to get some water. baby cousin oh good to see you timothy hey timothy make sure you go back and watch the uh, beginning of the broadcast so you can get the teaching and the uh, coaching instruction instruction glory so that's that's the story <laughs> oh any prayers that we're lifting up tonight uh any closing words or questions Oh, thank you, young Timothy. He says, hello, prophet. I love that. I hope you had a good day. And I'm so glad to be closing out the day with you. Any closing questions, words, prayers, lifting up? Anybody going through anything challenging that, that they need to just get off their chest? You said, do you ever get anything wrong? Um, I believe that every vision is accurate. Every single one. I may need to interpret it correctly, but every single vision that the Lord gives me is 100% accurate. And it's interesting because the Lord prompted, he, he trained me to say that today too. He was like, I didn't even know that question was coming. I was wondering why was the Lord saying that. He was saying every vision I give you is accurate. And it's so funny how the Lord will speak to you in your heart and it'll, it'll sound like it's coming out of your own mind, not of your own mouth, but it's the Lord feeding you what you what you should be saying to yourself and i was like yes every single vision that i was reflecting on king cyrus's vision i was like everything the lord said yes was accurate but then i was like i should have quickly said that media thing and uh, he was like yep every single thing every single vision that i give you was accurate rest assured in that and that's that's good for everyone to know on the broadcast when the lord is saying something he's being accurate again i may need to interpret it you may need to interpret it correctly but the the vision that he gives we can be, we can rest and be 100% sure that the vision he puts in my mind and the words that he speaks out of my mouth is truth. Is truth. Glory, yes. And you said it's always backed up by word. Yes. Yes, Alexia. You said no, she is accurate because God's word never turns void. Yes. That is so true. And then Nonky Donkey <laughs> said. How can you tell when you are misinterpreting something and when it's wrong? That's a great question. LOL, what's on page 373? Oh, yeah, Spicy Bay. Yeah, we need to know what's on page 373. Thank you for that. Um, that's a great question. We know when the when when there's a misinterpretation. I really haven't gone through a whole lot of misinterpretations. But we just have to keep trying until it clicks. Like, oh, that's what the Lord is saying. Like the Ku Klux Klan, when I was prophesying and I was, and the Lord showed me a small Ku Klux Klan, large Ku Klux Klan, and was saying, was showing me the, the member taking it off, right? That we're not talking about racism or anything like that. But I just want to say this. I do believe that the Lord wanted to prompt us to How do I say that? Blonde, blonde hair on a black woman is okay. It can come across, however, that like we don't like or appreciate our own hair color. It, it come, it can come across as like white supremacy, right? And like there's some type of root of white supremacy. 
But that's not always true. Sometimes it has nothing to do with white, white supremacy or a woman not wanting to wear black in that season of her life. And she might just really like the color. Just like we like red lipstick. <laughs> we, we just might want to wear red lips, lipstick. But the Lord was vivid enough to show us that vision, even though I didn't discern it until I got, until another prophet came on the line and we had, we had the same vision. And the Lord confirmed it because there was a small picture of myself and a large picture of myself, which represented what he showed me in my mind. The small figure that was fully clothed with the hair garment and the whole body to the one that needed to take it off, which was my actual self needing to take that piece off. And there could have been something uh, satanic re regarding that or, or an image or something related to that, that look. The Lord knew something about it that I wasn't being aware enough or flexible enough to understand. So even I get prophesied to by the Lord. And that's the real deep uh, part about it. You all know I was in shock for like, um, for like two or three days after that. And when I say shock, it wasn't a bad thing. I was just in awe. So if you if you want to know more about what I'm talking about, just go back uh, about a week or so ago and watch the hair with the testimony about the hair, and you're gonna see you're gonna see it all. And I was wearing a striped uh, collared top. So when it's inaccurate, to answer your question, it just means that it hasn't been fully interpreted. It's not even necessarily a a fully wrong interpretation. Uh, it's not necessarily wrong it's just not fully interpreted so if you say that's why i just say i'm just going to tell you what the lord says i'm like and i'm going to go to page 373 i'm just going to tell you i learned that principle because it, i can't be wrong if i just tell you what i see like had I, when i talked to king cyrus yesterday and when we were talking on the live had i just said and i see tv if i had just said that it's it's god's law it's his vision it's, it's what it is and then he came and said video production i saw it i just didn't say it so and i like that because i can tell you a little bit more of how the prophetic works now 99 percent of the time i say everything um i think in that moment i hesitated because i'm so deep in media and i wanted to make sure that i wasn't seeing anything related to me <laughs> so i had to sort that part out but if i just said it whatever if it was related to me or not it's still for you so um, that's just a part of me even growing in the prophetic, but it's interesting because a couple just, I think this week or end of last week, no, last Thursday, someone came on the line and said, I'm having issues. And then, uh, I looked at the picture, the Lord showed me and showed me clinging. I felt clinging. I said clinging. And a second later, he said, hindering spirits is my problem. And so that's what like the Lord is giving us. He's doing this for a reason. He's giving us such a, a clear picture of how the prophetic works and how accurate he is and how swift he is to give you the answers and the words when you need them. So I'm I'm even open enough to share share the big picture even when I I missed it. Just just a spy. Yeah. <laughs> Meaning I saw it, but I didn't say. It. So I do not want to do that again. You said, can people from other religions trust other prophets? I would definitely say yes. Uh, 100% yes, because we serve one most high God. So that's the purpose of a prophet too, to lead people to Jesus. And so if you are open to uh, being led by Jesus, you need to listen to a prophet for sure. But your prophet will never leave you wrong. As a matter of fact, the Bible says you can trust the prophet. The, the Bible does not say trust man the bible does not say the, the lord says trust god trust your prophet because your prophet is fully submitted to god fully obedient obedient to god humble and submissive to god and knows their their function or purpose to serve and deliver you so you can believe what they are saying now is a prophet still a person yes and are people Perfect, it depends on what side you're looking. If you're looking at their likeness of God, yes, they're made perfect in the likeness of God. But is it possible for me to make a mistake? Absolutely. I, I'm not gonna come up here and act like I, you know, I am I, I can't make a mistake. But if I 100 percent focus on what's on the heart of the Holy Spirit and I just tell you purely, you know, what he's saying, which is what I always do. Um, except for when I hesitated with King Cyrus there, <laughs> his prophecy, then yeah, you can 100% trust your, you know, 100% trust your prophet. 
but don't, I, I, I'm not God. So of course, if I make a mistake, I make a mistake. You said, okay, I'm back, phone died again. Okay, hey, King Cyrus, glory to God. You said, so if you misinterpret, just keep going with the vision until it fits what you think it should? Oh, that's a great question. No, what what's happening is, I, I love that question, so, so poignant. When you are just saying what the Lord is telling you, that's the first thing you do. So that's the truth. Now, the interpretation is up to us all. The, that We're all working through the interpretation. But when I say God said this, God showed me this, that's not to be argued with. Now, we can say, oh, what does this mean? What th That's what we do with the Bible. But when we look at the pure word and say, well, God said this, we are, we're not arguing with that. So the part of what your prophet says that take 100% the truth is when I say God said this, God showed me this. And then when I'm saying this is what this is what I believe it means and all that, now we need to be working together to make that make sense. Some of the time, it's always accurate. The interpretations are accurate. But I don't want to say that I'm going to give you all 100% interpretations because that is up to you. Like, that's part of your action item like with king cyrus all i said was god is showing me a mason jar he's showing me it lit up substance lit up inspiration 25 percent of it is empty god said this god showed me this now it's up to you to say you know what is, what is the lord saying sometimes it doesn't require interpretation sometimes the lord will just say boom the word that you need I love this. This oh man, this is um, this is today's prophetic practice, today's prophetic experience, um, and it's, I'm sure it's very similar to to of old. But we're living in these times on earth, so that's why I say today's. But it's all rooted in God's universal law. So that's what it is. That's what it is. So when God says it, when God shows it, that's 100% accurate. The interpretation, of course, we can always. Because there have been times where I've come on the live and I'm like, oh, it happened actually Thursday. I was like, the Lord showed me, it was one of the gentlemen, since it's already public, it was live, following Jesus 1983 came on. And that's when we had a very powerful prophetic experience um, as we always do, but that one was so shocking recently. That was one of the recent ones, and King Cyrus's was as well this week. But the clinging thing, how I said in a second later, he come, that's what he said. Now, here's, here's an example. The Lord showed me a, a, a direction. Him, a woman, who he was having some conflict with, in a third branch that he was involved with. And there was some conflict around this third branch. I said it. This is the word of the Lord. Now, I started then interpreting, which is the next level. So I'm like, does that mean that you've been involved with some other woman connected to her? He's like, no, what you're seeing is the church that I'm associated with because of her. And I said, oh, that makes sense. So that's the level where... The interpretation is where a greater degree of clarification. But the Lord has shown me that. And as a matter of fact, that's how the Lord makes it more interesting. Because if the Lord just said, boom, 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 boom. And just, because he can do that. He can use me and just give me full sentences. And he does do that even with his word. But if that's all there was, there would be no discovery. There would be no fun. There would be no engagement with you and God. So, and that's something that I realized months, months prior. I'm like, I like the, I like that the Lord has us do the visions first, gives us the word, and then has us work together to try, try to solve the mystery. And then everybody's like, oh, that's it. Cause it was really cool how the Lord showed me that, you know how a candy cane looks? That is the pattern. And the Lord is so creative in even the visions that he shows. He's not, he's not limited at all in his visions. So the Lord showed me him starting a curve to the woman that he was having an issue with and then something only connected to her that ended the candy cane, which was ultimately the church. When I thought it could have been another woman and the church is represented as a female or bride in nature. So it makes sense that I got that impression on my spirit. 
but yeah, it's fun. It, it's great. <laughs> like, it's um, it's an excellent element of our ministry. So powerful. Does that make sense, Donkey Donkey? <laughs> You said, I'll come back. You said, above all, you must understand that no prophecy of scripture came about by the prophet's own. There you go. That's exactly right. For prophecy never had its origin in the human will, but prophets through humans spoke God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. Yep. Exactly. Second Peter 1 21. Yes. Glory. That is so correct. And it is so wonderful and perfect timing to put that uh, multi-dimensional ministry, what a multi-dimensional ministry we have and your participation adds so much value to our overall experience. So keep it up. Thank you. Uh, any other questions before we, before we go? Cause like I said, I want to keep these around an hour, but um, going over a little bit is perfectly fine. Um, and if you have to go to bed, don't worry. We'll be with you tomorrow. Um, but I just want to say um, prophetically, I cover you in the spirit. I ignite a fire in you. I rekindle you. I speak protection over you. I speak dominion over you. Clarity about your business. Uh, an ability, a zest to go ahead and do the work. Write it down and focus on the details. I speak over you that you will not only gain greater clarity, but you will be more attentive and receptive to what you need to heighten your skill and your leadership. I speak the next level over you. And I speak love and excitement about God's word and purpose for you on your life, okay? So I'll see you tomorrow at 8. Thank you for joining me tonight at about 8.20, okay? So I do plan on coming on uh, at 8. But again, if you have to wait, just know that Sunday through Thursday, I'll plan on being around at 8 or very, very, very close. All right, love you all. Go to leahconnect.com forward slash register. Get your call. Okay, we're at level one. Make sure you're getting to level two, level three, and level, we'll do level four together when the uh, when the events come. But go ahead and sow. If you were blessed by the word, I encourage you to sow towards your seed gift. Remember, you're sowing, but the Lord has positioned me to give you gifts. So that's classes, courses, and one-to-ones, as well as books. And uh, I'll be in touch with you all. Uh, if you're interested in getting your one-to-one -one and knowing what your balance is with the accounts, you'll know what in addition you need to contribute in order to get whatever gift you want. You can tonight go and explore our website, aliaconnect.com, and see what's new on there. Hey, Latresa, you said God bless prophetess. Yes, glory, Latresa. Yes, prophetess. And then we're going to be engaging one-to-one. -one. Here are all the links you need in order to sew, okay? All right. PayPal and Cash App. And remember to put 91 at the end of your seed or you can sell your $91 seed. Get excited about the work we'll be doing together in our career coaching element. The details. Oh, yes. Oh, I'm so happy about this. So I'll be speaking to you all very soon. Make sure you follow. Okay, all the social media and tell a friend about our ministry. We are on a very clear mission. They have so much to gain. Okay. Boom. Psalm 91 seed. Our ministry seed. And then if you have questions, make sure you're emailing me or you want to share your testimony. We have a testimonies page. So some of you all's testimony are already testimonies are on the site. So you have a byline, so to speak, not a byline, but you are on the site. Mm-hmm. Yep. And so if you inboxed me and it wasn't a uh, like a public thing, of course, it's, it's on there as anonymous. But uh, but yeah, all wonderful things. But yeah, nothing, you know. Yeah, all just really great things, great statements. So more people can get to know what we're doing here. So thank you for doing your part for King for the kingdom of God in our ministry. I love you all, and I will see you tomorrow.